do subscribe to ikeda channel and press bell icon to get updates about latest engineering hsc and iit je main and advanced videos The 8051 microcontroller it has two timers which can act as counters also and these timers and counters they are of 16 bits means a 16 bit number can be loaded into these timers and the counters now these timers or counters they can act as time delay generators also and as counters also so let us study about these timers and counters in detail So 8051 microcontroller it is having two counters and timers means these two can act as counter also and as timer also so when it is acting as timer it is used to generate a time delay and when it is acting as a counter it is used to count the events which are happening outside the microcontroller so this timers or counter they perform two operations either to generate the time delay or to count the number of events now because it is having two counters and timers so these two timers are timer 0 and timer 1 and they can be used either as the timer or the counter now these timers they are 16 bits wide means timer 0 is also having 16 bits and timer 1 is also having 16 bits okay so the because uh, each timer is having 16 bits so it is also divided into 8 8 bits so 16 bits they are also divided into 8 8 bits 8 bits high byte and 8 bits for the low byte so higher byte it is denoted as th and lower byte it is denoted as tl okay so 16 bits if we want to have a 16 bit number then we can use the whole timer and if we want only 8 bits to be used then we can use the higher or the lower byte timers the 8051 counters means when these timers and counters they are acting as counters counting the number of events so they always count up means we are going to initialize them with the value of 0 and we are going to load the count value that from 0 to its maximum value it is going to increment the counter always count up means that the counter is going to increment okay so uh, these counters because they are 16 bits counters so each counter can load a value of 16 bits okay and uh, each counter is having a special register account register in the special function register area 
in 8051 we have some uh, space reserved for the special function registers these registers are 88 bit registers and they have special functions associated with it so for each counter that is counter 0 and counter 1 or we can say timer 0 and timer 1 we have a count register in this SFR area and in that count register the count value can be loaded okay so here the timers are of 16 bit so 16 bit value can be loaded so if we talk about that the counters always count up so we will have the initialized value as 000 it can count maximum up to f f f f means when all the 16 bits are 0 to the condition when all the 16 bits are 1 so when we load this count value into this count register this will be incremented like it will become 0001 then 0002 up till the value of FFFF so that is the maximum count value that can be counted by each of the counters of 8051 okay now when this counter is incremented when it is initialized with 0 0 and it is incrementing and it reaches to the maximum value and again it comes again it is incremented so again it is going to come back to 0 0 0 0 okay and that condition is called the overflow condition means the counter has reached to its maximum value again it is incremented and that condition is called the overflow condition so in that condition for each counter we have an overflow flag bit and that will, will be set in that condition for timer 1 also we have a overflow flag and for timer 0 also we have an overflow flag bit so for corresponding timers those flag bits will be set whenever the count value is overflowed okay So uh, this condition whenever the counter is overflowing that is called count rolls over. So whenever their count rolls over from the maximum count that is FFFF again to 0000, 000, 000, 000 means this condition rolls over condition. The corresponding timer flag in the TCON register it is set. TCON is the timer control register. It is an 8-bit register. We will study about it in later that uh, this TCON register it is having the uh, flag bits for both the timers. So that flag is going to be set whenever this overflow condition is achieved. So this was the little introduction about the two timers of the uh, 8051 microcontroller as I have said that these timers they are 16 bit timers so for timer 0 we will have 16 bits which are divided into two 88 bits that is TH0 and TL0 that is for timer 0 the higher bits and for timer 0 the lower bits now if this is the 16 bit register so out of these 16 bits we have the 8 bits for the higher and 8 bits for the lower so this is th0 and this is tl0 and complete is the timer 0 
so we can load an 8 bit count of value also and we can load a total 16 bit count also so separately they can also be accessed as two 8 bit registers and uh, collectively also we can access it as a 16 bit register similarly for timer 0 in sorry timer 1 it is also 16 bit and it can act as two 8 bit register that is th1 and tl1 timer 1 higher bytes and timer 1 lower bytes so this is from d15 to d8 and this is from d0 to d7 okay now let's come to the two registers which are associated with the functions of these timers and counters we have the two registers t mod and t con these are two special function registers means registers which are having a special function associated with it so this uh, two registers are for the timers operation this is for timer mode timer mode register and this is for timer control register okay and these two are the special function registers both these registers are 8 bit registers 8 bits for T mod and 8 bits for T con. So this register it is going to decide that in which mode the timers is going to operate and this timer control registers it uh, indicates the status of the timers that whether the overflow condition is achieved or not or uh, the control bit is uh, set or not that will be given by this T con register. Let us study the format of these registers in detail. So this timer mode register, it is an 8-bit register. 8 bits are specified here. Out of these 8 bits, the lower 4 bits are for the timer 0. And the upper 4 bits are for timer 1. Now each of these 4, 4 bits, they have specific function. Like this D7 and D3 bits, it is for the gate. This gate bit means starting and stopping of the timers. If you want that 8051 it counts, if you want to use its counters, so first we have to start the counters, okay. So this gate bit it is used to start or stop the counters if we want to start then we will set this bit as 1 and if we want to stop the counter then we will set this bit as 0 so this bit is used for starting and stopping of the uh, these counters now this is starting and stopping of the counters it can be done by hardware means also and by software means also Hardware means we can give an interrupt to it. Either we can give an interrupt or we can reset the microcontroller. 
so if we are resetting the timers or counters they will be stopped and software means is that we can write the instructions we can set this bit one or zero so to start and stop we have software means also software methods are also there and hardware methods are also there <coughs> Next bit we have in these two sections is the counter and the timer bit. This bit is used to decide that whether the uh, two timers they will operate as a counter or as a timer. So this bit is going to decide that uh, the timer will generate a delay or it will count the number of events. So if this bit if it is 1 then it will act as a counter and if it is 0 then it will act as a timer means it will generate the delay. Next bit in this T mod register we have is M1 and M0. These two bits in both the timers it is used to decide the modes of operation of timers. These two bits they can take different combinations like 00, 01, 10 and 11. So depending upon the combination we have the four modes mode 0, mode 1, mode 2 and mode 3. Okay, so let us study in detail what are the four modes of operation of these timers. So when these two bits they are having the value 00 then mode 0 is there which is also known as the 13 bit timer mode. When it is 01 then mode 1 is there which is called the 16 bit timer mode. When it is 10 then we have mode 2 which is called the 8 bit auto reload. And when we have mode 3 it is called the split timer mode. Let us study that how the timers function in these modes. First we will study the mode 1 which is the 16 bit timer mode. So this mode is known as the 16 bit timer mode. So 16 bit count value will be loaded into the count register. Now this 16 bit count value it can take the values from 0, 0, 0 to F, 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 F. Okay. So this count value can be loaded. Okay. And we have the uh, registers there. That is timer uh, 1 and timer 0 is there. So we have TL and TH. That is lower and higher bytes. So these bytes will be loaded into these two 8-bit registers. Okay. Now if we want that the timer starts counting. Then we have to start the counters. Okay. And these counters can be started by using the instructions set B. TR0 and set B TR1. This is for timer 0 and this is to start the timer 1. So first uh, step in uh, whenever we want to start the counting operation is to start the timers. Count value is loaded. Now counters are started by using these two instructions. After that the counter starts counting up. Suppose it is loaded with the value 0, 0, 0, 0. It is incremented 0, 0, 0, 1. 
Again, it is incremented 0, 0, 0, 2. Till it reaches its final count value, which is F, 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 F. Okay. Now, when this maximum count value is reached, again, it is incremented and it is come back towards again its initial value that is 0, 0, 0, 0. And that condition is called the rollover condition which we studied earlier now when this rollover condition is achieved i said that the overflow flag bit is set so for timer zero we have the uh, flag bit which is called tf0 overflow flag bit and we have tf1 for timer one so whichever timer is overflowed that flag bit is set means it is made equal to 1 okay and the programmer it can uh, see this flag bit if it founds that this flag bit is set so the it is going to stop the timer it is going to clear this uh, set condition because we have set this uh, bits as 1 so it is going to reset it it is going to stop the timers so that stopping can be done by the two instructions clr tr0 and clr tr1 this is to set the timers start the timers and this is to stop the timers this is for timer 0 and this is for timer 1 so if we talk about this mode 1 the first step will be to load the 16 bit count value into the two 88 bit registers after that we have to start the timers the timer will start counting up okay when it reaches its final value again it is incremented and it rolls back to its initial value so when this condition is achieved when overflow has occurred the overflow flag bits for the two timers it will be set and if we want to reset the timers if we want to stop the timers or if we want to reset them then we have to clear the two bits that is for timer 0 and for the timer 1 okay now if we want to repeat this process that if we want that again uh, the counter it starts counting from 0 0 0 0 uh, um, means avoiding this overflow condition again we have to reload the 16 bit count into the two registers and again we have to start the uh, count timers okay so this was the mode 1 which is the 16 bit timer mode now let's come to the mode 0 the difference between mode 1 and mode 0 is that mode 1 was 16 bit timer mode and mode 0 is 13 bit timer mode otherwise all the operations are same first the timers are started count is loaded uh, in 16 bit count the maximum value was fff but here we are having 13 bit so its range will be reduced 0 0 0 0 to 1 f f f so this is the maximum count value allowed in mode 0 this is loaded into the th and tl registers counter is started when overflow is achieved flag overflow flag bit is set then timers are stopped by clearing the bits next is mode 2 mode 2 is known as the 8 bit auto reload mode mode means here we cannot load the 16 bit count we are going to use the timers as separate th and tl timers okay 8 bit timers are there this 8 bit count is loaded into the higher bytes of the timers and a copy of this is placed in the tl register also so suppose we have loaded it with the because it is an 8 bit uh, number so 002 ff can be loaded okay maximum count value allowed is ff so suppose we have initialized here means we have loaded the count value 00 in th so that will be copied into the tl uh, register also 
Now this TL is going to be incremented. It will be incremented till it reaches the maximum count value FF. When it is FF, again it is incremented and the rollover condition is there. Means again it is 0, 0. So when this rollover condition is achieved, again the flag bits, they are set for timer 1 and timer 0. That is TF0 and TF1. In this case also we have to first start the timers by setting the bits, okay? And when this overflow condition is set, these two bits are set. Now, if we want that, uh, if we clear it, means uh, this rollover condition is there. If we want to start that, uh, this process is again repeated. The programmer need not to reload the count here. Okay, because this th bit it is again automatically copied into the tl. Count is first loaded in th and it remains there. It will not be modified. So again and again the programmer need not to reload the count value. Okay, it is going to just every time the timer it is going to uh, copy this count value from into the tl. Tl will be incremented. Okay, that is why this mode 2 is called the auto reload mode. But in mode 0 and mode 1, every time the count value is overflowed, the programmer has to reload the count value. Okay. Next mode is the mode 3. In mode 0, 1 and 2, the operations of the timer 0 and timer 1, they are independent of each other. If suppose timer 0 is operating in mode 0, the timer 1 is operating in mode 2. So their functioning is completely different. They are independent of each other. But in mode 3, the two timers, they are not independent of each other. They will collectively work. Suppose that we have initialized the timer 1 in mode 3 so due to this the bits tr1 and tf1 that is the timer control bit and the timer overflow bits of the timer 1 they will be used by timer 0 so it means that the functioning of the two timers it is uh, means it's a combination of it they are uh, cooperating with each other means they are not independent okay we can say so timer one bits they are used by timer zero if it is initialized in mode three so that is why it is called split timer mode the functioning of the timers is mixed up so these are the four modes of operation of the timers next uh, this was the t mod register which uh, is used to decide the modes of operation of uh, the timers next is special function registers associated with the timers is the tcon register it is the timer control Now this register is also an 8 bit register so it will have the 8 bits from D7 to D0 and each of the bit will have some function associated with it. So let's see the format of this TCON register also. So these are the 8 bits of the TCON register. D7 bit it is for the TF1 that is timer 1 overflow flag. Okay. This condition is uh, means this bit is set. Set means its value is made 1. Whenever the uh, count value means counter is incremented from 0, 0, 0, 0 to 1, 1, 1, 1. So when this condition is achieved, the maximum count value is achieved, then this bit is set. Okay. Otherwise it is reset. So this is for timer 1. 
and this TF0 it is for timer 0. Then we have TR1 and TR0. This is for timer 1 and this is for timer 0. So these bits are timer, run, control, bit. Okay. So these bits are for the starting up of the uh, these timers. If we want to start the timer 1, then we are going to set this bit. If we want to start timer 0, then we are going to set this bit. Using the instruction, what we studied, set B T R 0 and set B T R 1. Okay. Then we have IE1 and IE0. These are for the to enable the external interrupts. These are for the interrupts. Okay. IE1 and IE0. So it is to enable the external interrupts. These are the edge E is for the edge flag. Okay, so this is to enable the external interrupt edge flag 1 and this is to enable the external interrupt edge flag 0. So this is related with the interrupt structure. Also we have this IT1 and IT0. These are for the external interrupt signal type control bit okay these are to decide that at which edge means either from low to high transition of the clock pulse or from high to low transition the interrupt is going to work so these bits are related for the interrupt operation for timers only we have this tf1 tr1 tf0 and tr0 for timer 0 and the timer 1 so this was the TCON register which is the special function register having 8 bits. So in this video we studied about the timers or we can say counters of the 8051 microcontroller. We studied that it has two timers and counters which can act as a delay generator also and as the counter also. Okay, And we studied the two special function registers associated with it TCON and TMOD. So I hope that this topic is clear to you. Thank you.